So now that we've talked a bit about monitor objects in general, let's start focusing in on the piece parts that are provided by Java's built-in monitor objects, starting with synchronized methods. And we'll talk about how Java provides synchronized methods that are used to provide or to support mutual exclusion. And as we've talked about many times before, mutual exclusion is a means of protecting shared mutable state from corruption due to concurrent access by multiple threads, especially read-write access by multiple threads. So we're going to use another example to illustrate the concepts of synchronized methods in Java. And this example is called the busy synchronized queue. And the busy synchronized queue will showcase the various Java built-in synchronization mechanisms within the same interface that we looked at before. So if you recall, we had the buggy queue, which implemented the simple blocking queue interface. And now we're going to have something called a busy synchronized queue. And it will fix some of the problems we had with buggy queue, but of course, won't resolve everything immediately. As before, busy synchronized queue implements the simple blocking queue interface, which is just a subset of what's available with Java's blocking queue interface. It comes out of the box with the Java class library. This is the state that we need to protect from concurrent access, concurrent read-write access, and update access in order to prevent race conditions. And again, we have a, a linked list, and we have a count of the number of elements that are in the queue. Here's the constructor. As you can see, it initializes the state. And this constructor is only ever called once by a single thread. So there's no need for the constructor to be synchronized. The only reason you would ever synchronize anything in a constructor is if the constructor itself is accessing shared mutable state that other threads could be accessing at the same time. Uh, typically, other threads cannot access the state in this object because it's in the process of being constructed. But if you had, for example, an access to a singleton variable within a constructor, that would need to be synchronized if multiple threads could be calling constructors simultaneously. As you can see here, all, all the constructor does is it makes a new linked list and it assigns that to the M list field and it makes a new assignment of the capacity to the M capacity field. If you want to have synchronized methods, it's absolutely trivial. You simply mark them with the synchronized keyword. So in this case, we're going to make offer, poll, and is full synchronized methods. And what the keyword synchronized means in this context is it means that if there are multiple threads calling synchronized methods on the same object, then only one of those methods in one of those threads will be able to run inside of that method on that object at a time. And what's important to realize about that is if you have multiple objects with synchronized methods and multiple threads are calling different methods or the same method on different instances of a monitor object, then those can run concurrently. It's only if you have multiple methods being called on the same object where synchronized matters. And of course, that's because under the hood, there's that intrinsic lock we talked about before that is used to serialize access to the state of the monitor object. This is very similar to what we talked about earlier when we discussed the Java Rantrant lock. And if you recall, it had this property where you could acquire the lock if it was available or vacant, as the example from the restroom in the airplane used. And then when it's occupied, threads have to, to wait, either spinning or blocking, until it has a chance to go. Now, the way that we're doing things here in this particular example is we're using synchronized methods. And when you use synchronized in the method declaration, as we are doing here, the entire body of the method is serialized. So everything from the open curly brace to the closed curly brace of the entire method will run atomically. And you won't have to worry about uh, It's basically a critical section. And mutual exclusion will be ensured at the method level. Now, interestingly enough, the synchronized keyword is not considered part of the method's signature. It's considered to be an implementation detail. And that really plays in if you have inheritance and so on. You don't inherit synchronization. So if, if you subclass from a method, if you have like another class called synchronized queue that extends busy synchronized queue, those methods will not be synchronized by default unless you 
the subclass program implementer explicitly decide to synchronize them. And that's just a little bit of a weird quirk, but that's the way things work. So let's briefly talk about the pros and cons of synchronized methods, starting with the pros. So synchronized methods are actually pretty easy to identify because you just look for the synchronized keyword. So at a glance, you can say, aha, this is synchronized method. And, and that typically is a, an indication or a trigger that this is a monitor object. That's the first thing that should pop into your mind when you see synchronized. You say, aha, most likely instances of this class will be used as monitor objects. Another nice thing about this is that the, the method is the unit of synchronization, which is very easy to reason about. You know that if that method is called, it gets exclusive access to any shared state. Therefore, it's, it's fairly easy to reason about method-oriented synchronization, where you use synchronized at the method level. And if you read the monitor object pattern in the POSA2 book or at the link, the, the, uh, at the paper at the link below, you'll get a good understanding of why this is a useful thing. Another nice property about this is that the syntax is very compact. The synchronization specifier is done at the outermost part of the method signature, and there's no littering of anything in the code itself. It just all works magically in a synchronized way. Another nice property about using synchronized methods in Java, and this is really more true just about synchronized in general in Java, is that it supports reentrant mutex semantics. So just as we talked about with the reentrant lock, the, the synchronized method and the intrinsic lock that comes along with it in Java objects also supports reentrant behavior or recursive behavior. So as you can see here, uh, if you come in and you, you have the offer method be synchronized and the is full method synchronized, if you call is full from within offer, you won't deadlock on yourself because the intrinsic lock is inherently recursive or reentrant. Of course, not everything is uh, unicorns and rainbows, as I always like to say, and so there are some limitations. So uh, one of the limitations here is that when you have a synchronized method, it synchronizes on the intrinsic uh, lock on, on this, and therefore it's possible for other objects to synchronize as well, which can lead to confusing, strange deadlock style semantics. So here's a very simple example where we have ourselves a, a busy synchronized queue called Q, very unimaginative name, and thread T1 is going to basically loop while Q is empty. And then thread two is going to synchronize on Q. And because it's synchronizing on Q, that will actually use the this object, which is Q, Q is this object, and that will keep thread T1 from being able to access Q's critical section because we're using the object itself as the synchronization point. And you'll see in a second how to get around that, but that's, that's one of the consequences of synchronized methods. Another potential limitation with synchronized methods is that the granularity is fairly coarse grain. In other words, synchronization is on a per object, per method basis. And that might be too coarse grain, meaning that if you have synchronized statements, which we're gonna talk about next, you may be able to have more concurrency happening because you won't lock the method for its entire duration, but only for the parts where there's actually contention for shared mutable state. So those are some of the limitations with synchronized methods. There's also benefits of synchronized methods. And the whole mechanism is very simple, as you can see, because you just put a keyword in. You don't have to make any uh, reentrant lock objects. You don't have to use the try finally idiom that we've talked about before. So it's, it's actually a very simple way of being able to add synchronization to Java objects.